Bonnie had always done her best to raise her 10-year-old granddaughter, Amy, with love and care. After Amy's parents had passed away, Bonnie had taken on the role of both mother and father, determined to provide the best future for the little girl. However, the generational gap between them often led to misunderstandings, particularly when it came to Amy's passion for drawing. One evening, when Amy didn't come downstairs for dinner, Bonnie went up to fetch her. As she entered Amy's room, she found her granddaughter seated at her desk, completely absorbed in her work, headphones on, blocking out the world. At first glance, Bonnie thought Amy was studying, but then her eyes caught the sight of a drawing sheet on the table. Amy, Bonnie shouted, startling the girl. Are you doing those strange diddlings again? Amy quickly spun around, pulling off her headphones. Granny, I was just. Bonnie marched over to the desk, her eyes narrowing as she saw the colorful caricature on the paper. She reached for the sheet, but Amy tried to cover it up, although it was too late. Did you finish your math homework, young lady? Bonnie asked, her voice stern. Mrs. Warren called me today, Amy. She said you've been neglecting your assignments. Amy stammered out an excuse, claiming she had completed her homework, but Bonnie knew better. With a firm hand, she demanded to see Amy's math workbook. When she flipped through the pages, she found them almost entirely blank. Dear Lord, Amy, I'm tired of this nonsense. Bonnie exclaimed, exasperation lacing her voice. These silly drawings won't help you in life. No more doodlings. Finish your dinner and complete your homework, and you're grounded until you do better in school. Amy's face fell, her shoulders slumping. I'll finish the homework, she murmured quietly, but I really want to see my friends. Please, Granny. Bonnie shook her head firmly. You must earn that privilege by being responsible. Now come down for dinner. The dinner that followed was a tense and silent affair, both grandmother and granddaughter lost in their thoughts. But the quiet was shattered when the doorbell rang. Bonnie answered it, only to find a well-dressed man in his early 40s standing on her doorstep. Can I help you? Bonnie asked, puzzled. Before the man could respond, Amy dashed to the door, her face lighting up with recognition. Mr. Henderson, she exclaimed, shaking the man's hand excitedly. Bonnie felt a knot of dread tighten in her stomach. She knew who Mr. Henderson was, a renowned cartoonist from New York known for his contemporary caricatures. This could only mean trouble, she thought. Reluctantly, she invited him inside, wary of what news he might bring. I received a letter with some samples of your artwork, Amy. Mr. Henderson began with a warm smile. You have a real talent. I wrote you a few letters, but I never got a response. Amy looked confused. You sent me letters? She asked, her eyes flicking to her grandmother, who was suddenly very uncomfortable. Mr. Henderson turned his attention to Bonnie. Ma'am, your granddaughter has a natural gift for caricature. As a member of my magazine's art committee, I'm here to offer Amy a spot in our summer arts training program in New York. She'll need to pass a test, but if she does, She'll spend her summer learning under professional artists. If she does well, there's even a chance she could enroll in our academy later on. Bonnie's heart sank. The last thing she wanted was for Amy to be lured away by what she saw as a distraction from her education. She immediately stood up, her voice cold and resolute. I'm sorry, Mr. Henderson, but Amy isn't going anywhere. You may leave now. But Granny, Amy's voice was trembling, her eyes pleading. I want to do this. No. Bonnie's voice was firm, her mind made up. You're wasting your time, sir. Please leave. Mr. Henderson tried to reason with Bonnie, assuring her that all expenses would be covered, but she remained unmoved. Finally, with a sigh, he pulled out a file from his briefcase and handed it to Amy. This is the test assignment, he said softly. I know your grandmother doesn't agree, but if you complete this and return it to me by 10 a.m. the day after tomorrow, I can present it to my manager. My flight back to New York is at 11 a.m., so this is your only chance. I'll come back to pick it up." He gave Amy an encouraging smile and left, 
leaving the file in her trembling hands. The next day, Amy hurried home from school, eager to start on the test. But when she entered her room, she was shocked to find that all her art supplies were gone. Panic set in as she realized what must have happened. She stormed into the kitchen where Bonnie was calmly preparing lunch. Granny, where are my drawing materials? Amy demanded, her voice breaking with emotion. I sold them. Bonnie replied nonchalantly, not even looking up from her task. The money will go to your college fund. Amy felt a surge of anger and betrayal. I hate you, Granny. She cried, tears streaming down her face. I hate you so much. Without waiting for a response, Amy ran out of the house, her heart aching with despair. She made her way to a nearby pawn shop, and after a moment of hesitation, she took off the gold bracelet she had worn since her parents' death, a cherished gift from them. It broke her heart to part with it, but she knew she had no other choice. At first, the pawn shop owner refused to take the bracelet because of her age. But when Amy offered to accept only half of its value, allowing him to keep the rest, he agreed. With the money in hand, Amy bought new art supplies and returned home, determined to complete the test. That night, she sneaked down to the basement, where she spent hours working on her drawing. Exhausted, she eventually fell asleep on the cold basement floor, clutching her finished piece. When she woke up the next morning, Amy tried to leave the basement, but the door wouldn't budge. It was locked. Panic surged through her as she realized that her grandmother had locked her in, intending to stop her from delivering the drawing to Mr. Henderson. Desperate, Amy searched for a way out and eventually found an old chair. Using it to reach the small basement window, she squeezed through, careful not to damage her drawing or her new supplies. She made her way back into the house through the back door, furious and determined to confront Bonnie. Granny, you locked me in the basement. Amy shouted, storming into the kitchen. Bonnie tried to deny it, but her guilt was evident. The worst part came when she admitted that Mr. Henderson had already stopped by, and she had told him that Amy was not interested in his offer. But I wanted to do it. Amy cried, her voice filled with anguish. You lied to him because you hate my drawings. You don't want me to be like Mr. Henderson. Overwhelmed with frustration and hurt, Amy locked herself in her room, refusing to speak to Bonnie. She skipped meals, her mind racing with thoughts of how to escape and get to New York. That night, she hatched a plan to run away and meet Mr. Henderson on her own. She packed a small bag with essentials and crept into Bonnie's room while her grandmother was cooking dinner. There, she found the letters Mr. Henderson had sent her and wrote down his address. She also found $300 in cash, which she took. With her bag packed and money in hand, Amy quietly left the house and made her way to the bus terminal. At the ticket booth, Amy approached the man behind the counter. Can I get a ticket to New York? She asked, pushing a crumpled handful of dollar bills and coins across the counter. The man looked at her curiously. Where are your parents, young lady? He asked with a gentle chuckle. Caught off guard, Amy hesitated, unsure of what to say. Seeing her struggle, the man grew suspicious and called over a nearby patrol officer. Panic-stricken, Amy grabbed her money and backed away, quickly making up an excuse. Oh, there's my mommy. I found her, she exclaimed, pointing to a random woman in the crowd and dashing off before the officer could reach her. She found a quiet corner at the bus station and sat down, feeling defeated. Her plan had failed, and now she had no idea how to get to New York. As she sat there, lost in thought, she noticed a man standing among a group of homeless people nearby. He was dressed in nice clothes and holding a sign that read, I was robbed. Please help me get to New York. Amy's eyes lit up. This man needed to get to New York too. Maybe they could help each other. She ran over to him, tugging at his shirt. Hello, mister. I can help you, she said excitedly. The man looked down at her, surprised. Who are you, kid? And where are your parents? Thinking quickly, Amy lied. I need to get home to my parents in New York. Can you help me by pretending to be my dad? 
I have money for the tickets, but I need someone to take me there. My grandma is sick and couldn't come with me. The man hesitated, clearly unsure. It's not safe for a kid to travel alone or trust a stranger. Why don't you ask the police for help? They'll just make me wait, and I miss my mommy and daddy, Amy said, her voice trembling with emotion. Please, help me get to New York. I have my dad's address. After a moment of consideration, the man agreed, though he made Amy promise to find a police officer once they arrived in New York. With their tickets bought, they boarded the bus and set off for the city. The journey felt endless, but eventually, they arrived in the bustling streets of New York City. After saying goodbye to her newfound friend, Amy found a police officer at the bus station and asked for help getting to her father. The officer was suspicious but decided to help her anyway. He drove Amy to Mr. Henderson's address, where she nervously knocked on the door. When Mr. Henderson answered, he was shocked to see Amy standing there, but even more surprised when she threw herself into his arms and called him Daddy. The officer raised an eyebrow. Is this your daughter, sir? He asked, sensing something was off. Mr. Henderson hesitated for a moment but then smiled and nodded. Yes, yes, she is, my dear Amy. Is there a problem, officer? The officers gave Mr. Henderson a brief lecture about keeping a closer eye on his daughter before leaving. As soon as they were gone, Amy eagerly pulled out the drawing she had completed and handed it to Mr. Henderson. Here, she said, her face beaming with pride. I finished the test assignment. Mr. Henderson took the drawing deeply moved by Amy's determination. He realized just how much this opportunity meant to her and knew that he had to help her pursue her dream, no matter what.